Could batteries save the world? It's a lot of responsibility to throw on an inanimate object, but out of all the tools at our disposal to create safe, green, sustainable, and reliable energy systems, batteries are our best bet. This is something that we say often around here. Solar panels and wind turbines alone will not solve sustainable energy because the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. Batteries are the only way to regulate that green energy and ensure a consistent delivery. And not only do batteries revolutionize the way that we generate electricity, they also offer an unprecedented opportunity to change the way that we distribute that electricity. We're talking about decentralized power grids. Some recent weather-related disasters in our own city and around the world have proven that our 20th century electricity network will not survive in the 21st century climate. Here in Ottawa, Canada, we are nearly a week into cleaning up from an unprecedented windstorm. Six days later, there are still areas of the city with no electricity and people are wondering, how do we prevent this from happening again? Well, I think we've got an answer. So let's talk about it. So we know that Elon Musk has already made his opinion very clear about a battery powered future. Elon has said recently that the only way to transition our entire global electricity consumption to green energy is by producing an epic amount of batteries. Elon puts that number at 300 terawatt hours. But what does that even mean? Well, to get a sense of scale, that's 1,000 times more batteries than the entire global capacity to produce batteries right now. It would take Tesla's Giga Nevada battery factory 1,500 years to produce 300 terawatt hours worth of cells at its current rate of 40 gigawatt hours per year. So we need a lot of batteries, and that's just Elon Musk giving an estimate. We know that he has a tendency to underestimate really complicated projects, so honestly, the real number is likely much higher than that. Honestly, it very well may be just impossible to do this on a global scale. There is no shortage of people who would tell you that. But I wonder if people ever said the same thing about electricity. Imagine going back to the 1700s and telling Benjamin Franklin that someday, every house in the world would have its own supply of electricity. He'd probably scoff at you for being mad. People scoffed at Nikola Tesla and his theories on free, clean energy even after the dude literally invented the modern alternating current system. And people will continue to scoff at Elon Musk and his batteries. It's just the way of the world. But that hasn't stopped the early adopters from getting started with implementing battery energy projects. We can just look at Tesla numbers for energy storage deployments to get a sense of how this industry is growing. In 2017, Tesla Energy deployed 358 megawatt hours of stationary battery storage. By 2018, that number had grown to over 1000 megawatt hours, which can also be called one gigawatt hour. And then in 2021, Tesla increased again by deploying four gigawatt hours of battery storage. So, that's a pretty substantial amount of growth. And Tesla executives say that the demand for these energy storage products remains substantially above the company's capacity to produce them. Elon Musk said at the beginning of this year that Tesla actually could have produced more energy storage in 2021, but chose to prioritize electric vehicles for material supply. There's no reason to think that Tesla can't substantially increase that capacity. For one, the company is transitioning their energy products away from nickel-based battery chemistry and over to iron-based cathodes. Iron is an abundant and cheap material that will allow for a higher volume of cell manufacturing at a much lower price. And in addition, construction is underway on a new Tesla factory that will be dedicated to the Megapack unit a three megawatt hour shipping container sized battery that is made specifically for grid scale energy projects. Tesla estimates the new factory output at 40 gigawatt hours per year. 
Again, that's the same output as their existing Giga Nevada battery plant that has not only produced all of their energy storage projects to date, but has also made the majority of the battery packs for Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys sold in North America. So it's a massive amount of batteries. Long term, Elon Musk sees Tesla's energy division reaching one terawatt hour per year in capacity, which is amazing. But still, even at that capacity, it would take 300 years to make enough batteries to power the world. And that's pretty scary. It does seem kind of impossible. If you're wanting to cook more meals at home, you should have a sharp high quality knife to ensure you can prep food more quickly, which is why we're excited to work with Kamikoto again on the channel. Kamikoto Japanese steel knives only use steel source from mills in Japan, and each knife comes in a heavy duty ash wood box, which looks amazing and would make for a great gift for someone you know who cooks at home frequently. You don't need to be a professional to use a high quality knife at home. Using a sharp blade helps prevent accidental cuts from a dull blade slipping on food, all while making it faster and easier to prep food at home. But Michelin star restaurant chefs use Kamikoto knives, so the professionals are using them as as well. Each Kamikoto knife goes through a 19 step process that takes several years to complete and are backed by a lifetime guarantee. The Kanpaki knife set includes a vegetable knife, a slicing knife, and a utility knife. I've been using the Kamikoto knife set for a few months now and love them. A great knife makes all the difference in the kitchen. Right now, Kamikoto has a big sale and is offering an extra $50 off any purchase with discount code TESLASPACE on top of their special offers. You'll be buying a high quality knife with a lifetime guarantee, all while supporting our channel to continue making content like this. And now let's get back to the video. So yes, the long term goal here is going to be preposterously difficult to achieve. But that just means that we need to really get this ball rolling right now in any way that we can. So how do we do it? Well, we know that big grid scale battery projects have already started to take off. We've talked endlessly about these in previous videos, Australia, California, Texas, the United Kingdom. These are giant battery projects that power entire communities, which is great. But the beauty of Tesla's Megapack and Powerpack system is that it is modular. You can have as much or as little energy storage as you need. So that opens the door for even a relatively small company or business venture to transition to their own independent supply of clean energy. A great example of that recently is the Tesla powered Bitcoin mining operation run by Blockstream and Jack Dorsey's company Blocks, which was formerly known as Square. Tesla just delivered four megapack units to this facility in Texas that harness its energy from a four megawatt hour solar panel farm. Now, obviously there are a lot of opinions out there about Bitcoin and crypto, and that's totally cool. I don't care if you like it or don't like it, and we're not going to try and sway opinion in either direction. But the one thing that both sides can agree on is that cryptocurrency uses a ton of energy. And if, hypothetically, crypto were to be widely adopted as a real currency, then we are going to have to make sure that energy is coming from sustainable sources and not terrible ones like coal-fired power plants in Kazakhstan. That's going to be a very hard problem to solve on the global scale, but this one Bitcoin mine in Texas is a great example of how we get started on fixing it. And these Tesla mega packs are the tools that make it possible. And this isn't just about cryptocurrency. That's just an example that is in the news right now. We can apply the same concept to any high energy usage industry. Take laundromats, for example. I don't dare run my clothes dryer at home until off peak electricity rates kick in because it uses a ton of energy to do what it does. Now imagine the energy usage of an industrial scale laundry facility. That's a problem. What if these kinds of businesses could switch over their operations to disconnect from the grid and run independently on solar power and mega pack storage? It is possible. It can be done today. It is in fact being done right now. And that's pretty cool. There is hope if nothing else. 
Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. And before we leave the cryptocurrency thing totally behind, let's talk about one of the core fundamentals of that whole ethos, decentralization. I don't have a clue whether this is actually good or bad for the financial system, but I do have a pretty strong opinion on decentralization when it comes to electrical grids, and I think that is critical to our survival over the coming decades. A great example of this right now is what Tesla is working on in Texas. We learned the other day that Tesla has filed to change rules for grid operators in Texas to enable anyone with solar panels and batteries, including residential homeowners, to participate in the state's energy market. For whatever reason, Texas does not allow home solar and battery users to provide their extra energy into the grid and get paid for it, which I think is a pretty standard practice in most places. Tesla believes that they could provide megawatts of additional energy to the state electrical grid just from their existing solar roof and power wall owners, a market that is quickly expanding in the state as Tesla is reaching new deals with real estate developers in Texas to have new homes built with solar roofs, power walls, and EV chargers already integrated. This is a concept that Tesla describes as their virtual power plant. It's already operating in California, where Tesla solar and Powerwall units are the most plentiful. The idea is that the energy stored across multiple Powerwall batteries can feed back into the local grid and prop it up to prevent failures from overloading. This same idea can create decentralized microgrids within communities. With home solar and battery, your house can have its own power plant. But you can scale that up to a level to where your community has a larger scale solar and battery installation to provide extra support. And your city can have an even larger installation to support those community generators. And your state can have its own solar and battery generators that reinforce the cities. So you end up with these multiple layers of redundancy across very large areas. The way that we do things right now is with very few generating stations that are responsible for streaming electricity to giant swaths of the country. So if one of those stations goes down, the lights go out for thousands or even millions of people, and all of that electricity has to flow out of these generating stations on a series of chains to actually reach customers, sometimes over hundreds or thousands of miles of wires. What happens when those chains get broken? Unfortunately, we can speak from personal experience as to how badly our current electrical grid falls apart under pressure. So five years ago, our city of Ottawa was hit by a series of tornadoes. It was the first time that extreme weather like that had ever occurred in this part of the world, and it caused massive damage to the city's electrical grid. Most people lost power, and it took about three days to get electricity flowing again. We thought that was just an isolated incident, and that was as bad as things would possibly get. We were wrong. A week ago, the entire eastern region of Ontario and a chunk of western Quebec was hit by a massive cluster of thunderstorms. They're calling it a derecho, which is like an inland hurricane. This was way worse than the tornadoes. It's now day six, and they are still trying to fix all of the infrastructure that was broken. Thousands of electrical poles got snapped, even the high voltage towers made of steel collapsed. There are still tens of thousands of houses in our city with no electricity right now. The sheer amount of gasoline that has been burned in generators over the past week is staggering. The carbon footprint of these disasters is unsustainable. So that's obviously got a lot of folks around here talking about how we can prevent this from happening again. Because if we just put all of those poles and towers back up, then it's looking more than likely that another storm is inevitably just going to come and knock them back down again. Two major windstorms in five years in a city that has never had this problem ever in recent memory. If this becomes a trend, we're screwed. We have a 20th century grid that is no match for 21st century weather. Now, obviously we can't eliminate power lines anytime soon. 
but we definitely can work on shortening the distance between the source of power and the user. The distance can be as short as from your roof to your power wall. Not everyone is going to be fortunate enough to have that, so a community battery backup is the next best thing. And then we just grow and expand from there until there are so many levels of redundancy that even a superstorm can't black out everyone. Anyway, do you think this kind of transition is possible? And how long would it take? It's starting to feel like we have a very small window to make a very large change before things get too bad to save. But hopefully that's not the case. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.